just uh, beginning of the week, what's it like to have Tolupe Falatau back in the camp at 80 odd tests, Test Lion? Yeah, well, obviously, he's a, he's a class act, isn't he? We know that, um, you know, from uh, previous experiences with us. A fantastic player, brilliant to have in the group, just his personality as well, who he is. Um, yeah, no, just just brilliant to have him back. And uh, obviously, you know, your best players you want available, don't you? And Talupe certainly comes into that category. The sort of player you can throw straight back into Twickenham after being out of international rugby for seven months? Yeah, well, we, look, we see how he goes, you know, it's um, it's not an easy task, is it? He's been out of the game for quite some time. Um, um, you know, again, we'll see how he goes over the, yesterday and today. And uh, I'm sure Wayne will, will make the call and make the right call regarding him, uh, whether he's involved or not on Saturday. Just a couple of housekeeping, Neil. Um, Josh Adams missed the Scotland game. How is he? Yeah, no, the, the boys that have had a few niggles have uh, been training. So, yeah, seems all right. Just trained with us yesterday. Um, will train with us today, so um, hopefully they all come through unscathed and uh, hopefully uh, make themselves available for Saturday. And I suppose Willis the same, he had a nasty knock on the eye last week, apparently. Yeah, 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 everyone's the same. Um, all the guys have been training, so um, they all put their hand up uh, for selection. What's Twickenham week like, Neil? You've done it as a player and a coach. How special is it? Yeah, it's a huge game. There's, there's no doubt in that, whether, wherever you play England, you know, Twickenham, Cardiff or whatever is in the world, it's a, it's a massive game. And uh, going to Twickenham, obviously, is a, is a, is a, is a tough stadium to go to. Um, you know, I, I don't know, we haven't won this since the World Cup 2015. So, uh, you know, that says it all, really. So, obviously, they're a very good side, generally, and obviously a very impressive side at home. So, um, you know, it's their first home game, the Six Nations. And uh, I'm sure they're looking forward to it, as are we. You know, it's a big game for us and uh, one we look forward to every year. Um, Marcus Smith, you'd have seen a little bit of him last summer. Obviously, you've seen a lot of Dan Bigger. How do you see that sort of uh, battle going if they if they are the two tens on Saturday? Yeah, no, look, the two quality players. You know, Marcus is a fantastic talent. Uh, as you said, he came over in the summer and spent a few weeks with us with the Lions, and uh, it's a pleasure to be around. Fantastic person, but obviously a fantastic player. And uh, you know, he's got a bright future ahead of him, and his you know his all round game is is exceptional. To be fair to him, he's a young kid, but. You know, he plays with an awful lot of experience, you know, as if he's been around for, you know, for 10, 12, uh, 15 years. So he's, uh, look, he's a class act and uh, he'll be a big threat to us on Saturday. And I'd like to think, uh, you know, Big Z will, will be the same from our perspective towards them. You know, he's uh, he's been there, done it. Um, you know, he's closing in on 100 Welsh caps. So, it's, uh, you know, he's had a fantastic career and uh, another game he'd look forward to on Saturday. There's no doubt in that. Can you sum up Dan Bigger's contribution against Scotland? You've probably seen a lot from him, but the way he played in that second half, you know, carrying an injury as well. Yeah, look, he's as tough as they come in. He, you know, he's a, he's a, he's a winner. Um, you know, he, he trains like that in a week. He demands the best of himself. He demands the best of people around him. Uh, he demands the highest standards. And uh, I think you see that with him in the game on Saturday. He's, uh, you know, he's, he's a fantastic player um, throughout the world, but certainly he's been huge for Wales uh, over the last 10 or so years. And, you know, he, he deserves everything that comes his way. He's, uh, as I said, he's a great player and a tough player to go with it as well. One more for me, uh, Neil. Just sad news this week. Steve Black obviously passed away on Sunday. Somebody you obviously worked with with Wales and, and the Lions. Just sort of, um, just uh, you know, what, what was your reaction to that news? Oh, I was absolutely gutted. If I'm honest, he was he was awesome with us uh, back in the late '90s and early 2000s. A fantastic person, um, just great guy to be around. You know, he's brilliant for the squad. He's he's just incredibly knowledgeable um, and such a nice person as well. So obviously devastated a year of, of what's happened. And, um, you know, obviously I just send my best to his family, but fantastic person and um, great to be around. What set him apart, Neil, in terms of his style and what, how, he, how he did things? Yeah, he's different. He's totally different. You know, he's not your everyday uh, conditioning coach or psychologist as well, if you like, because he, you know, he's done so much in his life and uh, he knows so much about most things. Uh, there's not many things Blackie didn't know. So um, he was he was brilliant for us, along with Graham at that point in time, and uh, really give us a, a chance to, you know, uh, mix it against the best teams in the world. And um, you know, we had a pretty good time around that time when they were both involved with us. Thank you, Neil. Good luck on the weekend. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks very much. Hi Neil, Graham Thomas here. How are you doing? Yeah, good. Thanks. You? How are you? Good. Thanks. Yeah. Um, just to go back to Toby Falatau, um, you've been part of, of management teams, Neil, with with both uh, Wayne and Warren, where you've brought players back in who've been out for a long, long time, like Toby. Um, sometimes it's worked really well for you. Occasionally, it hasn't. Just give me an insight into what you have to weigh up with the decision with with Toby, whether to bring him in, whether to start, whether to put him on the bench, whether he's not ready, 
What are the things you have to weigh up? Yeah, look, he's um, you know he's been there, done it, hasn't he? That's 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 what he's all about. At the end of the day, he's, he's already played two games for Bath. Sometimes, as you said in the past, if we'd had players coming in who hadn't played any rugby, so um, we'd back ourselves to get him up to speed and get him right. Um, Toby's only obviously just come in uh, yesterday, so he's been doing a fair bit of work in uh, in the recent weeks and probably last six, I would say, eight weeks with Bath uh, to get himself right to play. So um, look, and you know we we've known him pretty pretty well from a coaching perspective and a and a team perspective as well. So. As I said, we'll have a look, see how he is uh, yesterday and, and certainly today. Um, you know, we'll have a bit more Boris today in the training session and uh, see where he's at. And, um, you know, to say he's a class player, been there, done it. So um, I don't think the occasion's an issue. It's just whether he's, you know, we feel he's conditioned and he's right to go. So do you take any notice of those club games or do you assess him purely on what you see in camp? No, we'll have a look at the club games. You know, you have to do that. And um, it's a game, uh, you know, he's the, he's played the two games for, for Bath, so which is important from our perspective that he's actually, he's got himself through two games, which is massive. So um, I think 60 minutes and 80 minutes. So um, it's, uh, yeah, that's important from our perspective. Uh, we'll obviously, you know, test match rugby is a different animal and, um, you know, we'll assess as well how we see, you know, whether he's right or not of these uh, coming days. What's the situation with uh, Willis Salahalo, Neil? Is he available? Yeah, yeah, they're all available. Everybody's available. Um, there's been a couple of knocks and a couple of bumps and stuff, and as you expect. Um, but again, uh, all the guys have been training, and they're all available for selection. Right. So, how serious was was the gash on the eye that he had? Oh, it's the same as anything in it. You you know you pick up a few stitches and stuff on that. So it's just one of them things. It's just a collision in training. It happens. Um, it's just one of them things you got to get on with it. Right. Um, just to go back to the point you were talking about, Marcus Smith, um, what do you think the difference is in terms of the threat England pose with Marcus Smith at 10 com compared to Owen Farrell at 10? Yeah, they're really just different players. You know, I think, you know, uh, Owen's a fantastic player. He's been a world-class player for such a long time. You know, his defensive efforts are huge. His chat, his communication, um, obviously his kicking, you know, he's world-class. So, um, you know, he brings a lot of experience to England, Owen, when he's there and he's been there, done it. And Marcus is obviously a young a young talent starting off in Test Match Rugby. So, um, you know, there's a difference in that alone. But again, Marcus, as I said, he certainly in the summer, he seems like he's been playing the game an awful long time and at the highest level. So, certainly doesn't lack confidence, but, you know, he backs up with talent as well and he's very grounded as well fantastic kid to be around and so is Owen so um, look it's, uh, you know, it's a pleasure to be involved with, them, with the Lions and uh, I look forward to going against them on Saturday and I'm sure the boys do themselves our boys and just lastly from me um, last year when you played them you had a couple of calls that went in, in your favour and then the whole momentum of the game seemed to, to, to be with you how important is it on Saturday that you seize those moments where the momentum is with you and you make the most of them. Yeah, well, England are a team that start well generally as well. They tend to get early scores on the board. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a tough side to play against when you've got to go chasing them guys. So um, it's important that we start well and we stay in the game certainly early on. And, and as the game progresses, you know, I like to think we can, you know, uh, impose ourselves on them as well. So, um, but it's the, the start is important. And um, as I said, they're a good outfit. They're a good side. We've got some players coming back with experience. So, you know, it's going to make them a little bit stronger again. But um, look, it's a, it's a tough game. There's no doubt in how we're under no illusions. Uh, we said that, but it's something we're looking forward to as well. It's a real good challenge for ourselves and see where we're at as well. Thanks, Neil. Thank you. Yeah. Cheers. We'll do Matt and then Nick and then move to the embargo section. Yeah, Neil, just uh, Gareth touched on your experiences at Twickenham. What's the, uh, what's the key to going up there and winning? You have to play well. <laughs> it's, play, it's plain and simple. There's no, there's no easy way about it. You know, um, you know, I've been there with sides in the past, good sides, and we've, we've come away with, uh, with nothing basically. Um, so in 2012, I remember winning that game, but it was a very tough, tough game. And obviously, Scott Williams is brilliant to win us the game that day, and then heroic defence, you know, to win us the triple crown that year. 2015 was the same. We we're just staying in. Then that World Cup, we we're under pressure for long periods of that game but Bigsy kept us in the game and obviously Gar's try you know later on was was huge but there's no easy way about it you have to be incredibly physical you have to be incredibly disciplined you have to take your chances when they come and uh, minimize them as, as much as you can it's certainly going to come on Saturday there's no doubt they're going to have chances but you know we've got to we've got to be defending well and when the opportunities come for us we've got to take them it's plain and simple um, you know we need to be ready uh, certainly ready mentally and physically on Saturday because it's going to be it's going to be a tough afternoon there's no doubt in that 
you get the sense down the years that, that this is a little bit of a different occasion, um, particularly going up to Twickenham. You'll have a few players who've never played there before, a um, few of the younger lads. How important is it to get hold of, of those guys this week and not just to, to sort of get them, get their heads right? I guess on a week like this, it's almost about calming them down as much as it is winding them up, I guess. Yeah, it's about keeping your composure. Of course, there's a bit of nerves around. You can sense that, you know, certainly yesterday, um, you know, Early on in the week, there's no doubt in our everybody knows how big a game it is. Um, from you know, just from a Wales, England, or England, Wales perspective, but from a Six Nations perspective as well, is about uh, you know, if they come out on top or we come out on top, it's a good opportunity for us to go on and you know, uh, be, be competitive and be in the rest of the championship. So it's a huge game from that perspective. Um, but again, you know, the guys tend to take in this in their stride anyway, they know what it's all about, they know what's coming in the youngsters. So, um, you know, you just leave them be really and keep them to their own, you know, let them be to their own decisions. And uh, I'm sure they'd be ready to rock come Saturday. Just last one from me. What have your experiences been of working with Manu Tuolangi? Um, obviously, on the Lions tour and things like that, he's obviously back in camp with them. What, what does he bring? Oh, he's a, he's a class player, and he? he's uh, he's going to make any side stronger. There's no doubt in that. He was uh, he was with us in 2013 on the Lions, and uh, he's a little bit unlucky with a couple of injuries as such. But he's he's a big game player. Again, we have played against him so many times in Wales England games, uh, England Wales games. So um, he's a big threat to us. Obviously, you know he's very physical um, defensively, but he's obviously a very good tackler and a very good rugby player in general. Uh, attacking player, sorry, and a very good player in general. So you know he's going to make them stronger if he is involved, and um, you know he's one we certainly we'll have to look after on Saturday. Thanks, Neil. Thank you. Okay, and then Nick. Hello, Neil. Nice to see you again. Thank you. Thank you. How are you? Okay. Um, How are you? Uh, yeah, good. Thank you. Um, uh, first memories of watching England Wales and favourite memory from that this fixture. Um, <laughs> um, first memories, really, I suppose, is uh, going back to actually going as a fan. Um, I think it was uh, I, I, again. I was a young kid at the time. It was a draw in Cardiff. Um, um, in the 80s, so that would be my first time going to the stadium with my uncle, uh, being in the World West Terrace. So, um, so that was a fantastic experience, you know, um, just being obviously a big rugby fan and, and going to my first game ever. So um, that was an incredible experience. Um, yeah, uh, look, every game is a, is an important game and, and one that you always remember against England. You know, I was one of the players that played in the 90s against some fantastic England sides that come out, come out on the wrong end, I can assure you. So um, I was lucky enough to play with a couple of them on the Lions as well. So you understand how good these boys are and just scraping a couple of victories. Um, probably it's difficult to say as a player, certainly probably 99, you know, stands out as a, as a fantastic day at Wembley um, and being involved as a coach, it's probably two is uh, the 2013 and 2015 games, probably, you know, they were huge occasions for us. And um, um, obviously, you know, uh, we'll live with you forever, if I'm honest, in terms of your memories and how them games went. Brilliant. Thanks. Now, can I ask you one question as well? When you, when you run onto the pitch with a kicking tee, do you actually have a conversation with Dan? Are, are you are you offering tips, advice, or, or is it just... Uh, no, it just depends tea? on how he's going, how he is, if it's something that we've worked on in a week or something, just a focus point. I might say something quickly, uh, might not either. So um, I'm just generally just trying to get the messages to the team if what's ever needed at that point in time. Um, so I'm not always looking at the kick all the time, but um, often not I am. But yeah, look, it's, uh, if, if he needs anything, but generally he doesn't. So um, it's just a, a very small percent uh, if, if he does need something. Brilliant. Thanks, Neil. Enjoy the week. Thank you. Cheers. No problem. Thank you.